So if I could give us a challenge, I would challenge to be a blessing to those that you come in contact with this week, to find a way to bless those that are closest to you. You know, as I, as I watched them uh, as, as they went, there were so many times, and, and they wanted us to see this, that they just passed right by opportunities to be a blessing to others. Oh, if I could just say this challenge, not from that, but from what God has laid upon my heart and that, is that, is that we bless those closest to us this week. Maybe some in your family, maybe some that, that you experience at work, some that you live around, some that you, some that you see, some that you just pass by. Be a blessing. If you look up bless in the dictionary, you come up with one, two, or three different definitions. You might come up with something that, that says blessing uh, is to make something holy or someone holy by saying a very special prayer. We pray prayer of blessings on places and things and people. Another definition might be to ask God for care and protection for someone. You would say, God, would you bless my family? Would you bless those that I work with? But, but you come up with this third definition. To, to bless something is to provide a person or a place with something good or with something desirable. You can bless someone by giving them something good or desirable. And what I hope that, that we'll see in just a few minutes after we've studied God's Word together, that we'll see that we have something that we could, we could give to others that would be a blessing. We have something that we could, we could share, we could say, we could do, we could actually give that would bless someone else. Uh, I want us to think today about what you just saw, how to be a blessing to others. Would you find in your copy of God's Word, would you find the book of 1 Samuel? It happens to be the ninth book of the Bible. So find 1 Samuel, and in particular, would you find chapter 18? 1 Samuel chapter 18. Context for 1 Samuel is, is that 1 Samuel 18 is a it's a story of a beautiful friendship that had every uh, possible way of not being a good friendship. It's between two people, one named Jonathan and one named David. Jonathan happened to be the king's son. He was the prince of Israel. He would follow in his father's footsteps and one day be king according to the hierarchical method of genealogy in the Old Testament. He was born to be king. But God, however, ordained and appointed David, someone that was in Saul's army to be the next king. And when God blessed David and, and said that he would, he would be the next king, the, the normal thing, if it was you or me in this story, was that we would have turned to jealousy and we would have been, been very angry. Why couldn't I be king? I'm supposed to be king and somebody else is going to be. And it would have formed possibly a friendship that would not be filled with, with good things, but be filled with something totally opposite, filled with strife of jealousy between two, one that was supposed to be king and not, and one that wasn't supposed to be king, but got appointed. But, but I think what we're going to see is how they blessed each other. How, how, they, how they were a blessing to others. How they, they gave good things, either through words or through deeds or through possessions. They gave good things to each other. And their friendship is not only one of the most unique in all of Scripture, but it's one of the strongest in all of Scripture. So today I want us to, to think about how we can bless other people. Hey, there's not another book in the world like you're holding. Would you stand and allow for me to read? And I want you to follow along, if you would, from God's Word, either in your Bible. In fact, show your favorite neighbor in your Bible or on your tablet or on your phone where 1 Samuel 18 is. Show, show your favorite neighbor right now where it is. I like it right there. Got it. So if you don't have a, a, a Bible close to you, either one that you're holding or maybe phone or tablet, I'm going to have it on the screen. Or just slide over close to somebody. And let's read about this unique friendship. This, this passage will be familiar to you if you were here last week because it's, it's the second part. Look at what God's Word says. First Samuel, and if you're at First Samuel chapter 18, verse 1, say, I'm there. I'm there. 
After David had finished talking with Saul, he met Jonathan, the king's son. And there was an immediate bond. Some of your translations say their souls were knit together. Now that's a strong bond. Between them, for Jonathan loved David. And verse 2, from that day on, Saul kept David with him and wouldn't let him return home. And Jonathan, verse 3, made a solemn pact or gave David his word. It's a much stronger word than just a promise. It's a, it's a, I am yours. It's close. It's powerful. Made a solemn pact with David because he loved him as he loved himself. Now look at verses 4 and 5. Jonathan sealed that pact or that solemn word. He sealed it by taking off his robe and giving it to David. And together with his tunic, his sword, his bow, and his belt. And, and, and here's partially what it did for David. Look at verse 5. You tell me if it had an effect. Whatever Saul asked David to do, David did it successfully. So Saul made, a, made a, him a commander over the men of war, an appointment that was welcomed by all the people and by Saul's officers alike. Two people that blessed each other, and God did something extraordinary through it. Pray with me. Father, help us to see today how we can be a blessing to others. Help us to come away from, from our worship and study of your word today committed to bless others. I pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you and be seated. This service has, has had a common theme. Uh, you were able to see how you blessed our children, whether you gave or prayed or, or work in our children's ministry or supported in another way. You were able to see how you, how you did that. We were able to hear testimonies of not just... Uh, how those that worked received a blessing, but what God did through it. We've, we've worshiped together today, and that's when we've said to God, God, you've, you've blessed us. And, and for that, we're grateful and we're, we're thankful. Through our drama ministry, we were able to see that sometimes just a helping hand or a, a smile, an encouraging word, or just noticing or, or, or picking up a sippy cup that falls down, just just through word or deed, our actions just be a blessing. And we've read a text from the only book like it in existence about how God blessed David through Jonathan. So I have to ask, what do we do with this? What, what do we do with the time that we've come together to, to, to study God's word, to worship to, to communicate with God and commune with God? What do we do with it? What, was it just a, was it just a, a good time and, and we leave uh, no different than we were when we walked in or do we leave here ready to put into practice what we've seen? I would say to you, I think you and I are called to bless others. We're commanded to bless others. We're equipped to bless others. We have things that we have that can be a blessing to others. You know, in thinking, and I just, I, I've been thinking through, through all that we can do. I think there's, there's three ways that we can bless others. And the first way would be that we see in our text would be through our words. Through the words that, that, we, that we say. Now, we bless God through our words. We, you know, we sing our praises. We say that, that, that we're thankful for the thing that God do, but, but we, can, we can use it to, to bless others. In our, in our text that we read, it says that, that Jonathan used his words to give an oath, a solemn pact. He promised his commitment. And that's really big because here was, here was Jonathan who was supposed to be king but wasn't going to have that chance to be king. And here's David who was just a friend and and all oh, it could have been, it could have been that, that he used his words totally different. But he used his words to bless him. In fact, if you, it's kind of cool. Too. It's a really cool story. If you've never read it in its entirety, take time this week to do it. Uh, at, at the beginning of chapter 19, I'm not going to uh, read the text, but at the beginning of chapter 19, 
uh, uh, Jonathan carries this using his words on. He goes to David and he says, hey, uh, David, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go find out what my dad's thinking. Because, you see, what had happened was that Saul became very jealous of David's success. And Saul put out a, a hit for David. In fact, he offered a, a reward for any of his army that would kill David. And Jonathan went in, chapter 19, 1 through 3. He went into his dad, and he just listened. And he found out where they were going to be setting up ambushes for David. And he went back to David, and he said, David, don't go here, 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 here. This, this is what I heard. He's using his words. He, he's, using, he's using the thing that, that God gave us to communicate. He's using it to, to bless David. And I would say to you that, you and I can bless others with our words. Someone said that, that wise sayings often fall to the ground, but a kind word is never wasted. Mark Twain says, kindness is a language which the deaf can hear and the blind can see. Someone once said, kindness makes a person feel good whether it's being done to him or done by him. A kind word is powerful. And I hope that you'll take opportunities to say kind words to people. But, but I want us to think just a little bit deeper than that for a second. I don't, I don't want us to just leave and think, well, okay, we're just going to go out and we're going to say nice words to, to people. I hope we do that. I hope. In fact, I'm going to give you 20 seconds. 20 seconds. I need you to think for the next 10 sec seconds of something nice you can say to your other favorite neighbor that you hurt their feelings a while ago because you didn't show them your spot in the Bible. You got five seconds to think of something nice to say to the person by you. You got three seconds, two seconds, one second. Say something nice to the person beside you. Say something really nice. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. If nobody spoke to you, get up and move. <laughs> Find somebody that's smiling right now. Sit down by them. Hey, so I hope you do that. But I want us to think about something else, okay? I want us to think about how Jesus blessed others with his words. He's our ultimate example. Ultimately, we want to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. So, so how did Jesus bless others? Well, let me, let me share with you two things that Jesus did that you are equipped to do right now. Two things that Jesus did that, that fit you to a T. You, you already have the privilege of doing these two things. Number one, Jesus prayed for others. He used his words. We have words in Scripture. We have recorded Bible verses where, where Jesus was saying prayers of blessings to people. He used his words. I love the, the passage that, that's in Matthew 19 and 13. I love that because we kind of did that today. Matthew 19, 13. It's on the screen for you. It says, and, and the little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and to pray for them. Jesus used his words to do that. I, I like what's found in John 17, 9. John 17, 9 is a prayer that was prayed by Jesus. And he's actually, although he may not use your individual name, he's, he's praying for you. Jesus, his own words. He says, uh, I pray for them, Lord, and I'm, I'm praying not for the world, but for those that you've given me, for they are yours. He was praying for you. And one of the greatest things that we can do for each other is to pray for each other. But sometimes we think it's like the least thing. It's like, I want to go and do. I want to, I want to go and help. I want to go and, and, and make a difference. When, when, truth, when truth of the matter is, that's important. But what's more powerful than asking the creator of the universe to bless someone? What's stronger than that? What's bigger than that? That's the, that's the biggest thing that we can do. We always think of it as, as a last resort. I would say to you that the person sitting beside you, covets your prayers they want you to pray now we may not mention it we may not and guys we're the worst men we're, we're terrible 
Because we think if we ask somebody to pray for us, well, oh my goodness, we're, we're admitting a weakness that we have. Yeah, we are. We're admitting that because we don't have it figured out. We don't have all the answers. And we all struggle. So, so praying for someone is actually what they want you to do. They want you to take their name to Almighty God and ask God to do something amazing in their life. So Jesus prayed for others, but Jesus did something else. And this, one, this one's very personal. Jesus used his words, and he prayed with others. That's only one word different than the first point, but it's huge. He, he, didn't just, he didn't just say prayers for them. We have those recorded. But he prayed with them. I like the fact that you cannot separate Jonathan and, and David. Well, they are with each other. And, and although we don't have a recorded prayer, a recorded verse saying that they were praying for each other, I know that they did. David wrote 75 prayers at least in the book of Psalms. And I think some of those had to be while he was with Jonathan. I know some of them were while he was running away from Saul. And the only reason that he was able to, to not be killed by Saul was because Jonathan was telling him where Saul and his men were going to be. So I know they spent time together. And one of the greatest things that you can do with someone is pray with them. Donnie, that just doesn't fit me. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. Well, you talk to other people, don't you? And prayer is just talking to God with other people. You can do that. I know some of you are really nervous right now. You're thinking, he's fixing to make us pray with each other. <laughs> no, I'm not. But I know you would. And it might be uncomfortable for a little bit, but I, I know that, I know that you, would, you would do it. You, you would follow Jesus' example. Hey, look at what the Bible says in Luke 9 and 28. I think it's going to be on the screen. Jesus is kind of in his ministry, and, and Jesus is the Son of God. Okay, He's the only begotten Son of God. He's the one. He's the Messiah. He's the King of kings and Lord of lords. And look, notice that he didn't pray by himself all the time. That particular time, and this was when the, the, the Mount of Transfiguration was fixing to take place, he took with him three other guys to go pray with him. That verse, you just can't get around it. You cannot get around it. Guys, I cannot allow any of us to have an excuse from not praying with each other. If we're to be a New Testament church that, that God has called us to be, we have to pray for each other and to each other. Will you accept this challenge? Will you? And, and, and if you don't, that's okay. Just think about it. Will you accept this challenge that you're going to, if you don't do it now, you're going to start praying with someone? That might be spouse. That might be children. Or that might be friends. But you're going to start praying with someone. That's awkward, I know. Only for a few seconds. Once you start pouring your heart out to God, I'm going to be the easiest thing you'll ever do. It'll be the hardest thing to start, and once you get going, it'll be the hardest thing to stop, too, because you're going to fall in love praying with each other. Jesus prayed for, Jesus prayed with. I read a devotion every day, Charles Spurgeon, morning and evening. It's a beautiful, beautiful, written in a little different language than what we, in vernacular, than what we speak right now. But this was this past week. Listen to this one. I think this was a, an evening devotion from Charles Spurgeon. Prayer is an open door of which no one can shut. Devil may surround you on all sides, but the way upward is always open. Hey, pray for each other. Pray with each other. And that is a fine way to use your words. Partially in, in study for an upcoming sermon series. I read a book by uh, Levi Lusco, and it's called I Declare War. Part of that book was about how sometimes this is used as a very bad weapon. Y'all didn't even hear that. You know it has. Somebody's used it as a weapon against you, haven't they? Now flip that. Haven't you used it against someone else? In that book, he gives a little data he says on average that 16,000 words come out of your mouth every day. Now, according to him, ladies, you skew that in the upper echelon. Okay? 
Y'all, y'all speak many more words than, than we do as men. But on average, it's 16,000 words. Now, I did my math, and I don't know how close I am, but for the average American lifetime, that means that there will be, and ladies, yours will be much larger, that means that, that there will be 860 million words that come out of your mouth. Uh, in that book, Levi Lusco says, how many of those do you use to bless others? Hey, find a way to use your words. Use your words to bless others. Let's find ways to, to pray for and with. Let's find ways to, to be a blessing to others by what we say, not, not a, a weapon of mass destruction. Let's use it as a hospital. Let's use it as a word of encouragement. Let's use it as strength. Let's use, let's use it like David and Jonathan used it. Let's, let's use it like, like Jesus did. Secondly, I think we see in our text not just that I can bless others with my words, but I think we have to acknowledge that I can bless others with my possessions. With my possessions. By, by, by Jonathan giving up his robe. By the way, that robe would have been one color that no one else in all of Israel would have had. I don't know what color that was, but it would have been one that no one else had because it would have been one that immediate recognition said, this is the prince of Israel. Not the king yet. The king had his own colored robe, but his son, the prince, and that's what what Jonathan's title was in the Old Testament. He was the prince of Israel. His robe would have been a a certain color. And when he took that robe off and he gave it to, to David, he was saying, I'm not the prince of Israel. I'm not the next king. He's saying, you are. You you are. Hey, that that tunic or that body armor, hey, it would have been the Kevlar of their day. There would have been a crest on that that was only for king's house, King Saul's line. No one else would have a a, a body armor, a tunic like that. No one else would have a, a, a crest on his breastplate except for the prince of Israel. And when he took that off and he, he, he put it on David, he was saying, I, I don't want, it would have been the best material, Kevlar of its day. My life is not important, now yours is important. But when he took that sword and that bow and that belt that held it all together, you remember what David had? Come on now, be, be honest. David had a slingshot. And now he's got the best bow made, the best weaponry of the day. Oh, don't think for a second that that was easy for Saul to give, uh, for Jonathan to give. Don't think, because that's what connected him to Saul. And now he's saying, I'm not in this. You are, David, but I'm right here with you. I do it by my words, but I do it by my possessions. Can I... Can I say two things very briefly? I'm just going to say them and move on. Number one, sometime in your life, you had something given to you. Someone out of the kindness of their heart. I'm not talking about a birthday gift. I'm not talking about something you earn. I'm talking about somebody just gave you something. I, 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 I would love to hear from you if no one has ever given you anything in your life. I'm just convinced that you're blessed. That somewhere along the way, someone gave you something. And if that's, if that's true, and I think it is, then number two has to be true as well. Is that you have something that you could give to someone else. Someone gave you something in your past, but you've got something right now. Donnie, I don't have much. I understand. I'm just saying that when they gave you something, somebody in your past, they may not have had much either, but they chose to give it to you. And, 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 and the truth is, man, Jonathan could have kept all of that stuff. He couldn't wear it anymore, but he didn't have to give it to David. He could have put it in his closet, hung it up with all the other regalia that he had, and never, give, never had given it to, to David, but he, but he chose to. Oh, listen, listen, I've been the recipient of, of someone giving me something. And I think, I think we all have. Somewhere along the way. And I, I just believe with all my heart that you know somebody 
that needs something. You and I are blessed. Find something to give away. (laughs) It'll be the best thing you own the day you give it away. Because you will have put a blessing into somebody's life. You will have used your possessions to be a blessing to others. Kim and I and Avery Ruth Randolph slept in a, a bedroom last night. A new bedroom. A new bedroom. Kim and I slept on the bed. Avery slept on the cot in a new bedroom that was, uh, had, a, had a new fresh coat of paint and had a, a bathroom that uh, was put together and painted and fixed. Not by Kim or me or Avery Ruth, but by two families in this church that chose to take a couple of weeks of their lives and come over and just work, give up their time. Bobby and Patty, Valerie and Bob and Becky Williams painted the bedroom that we slept in last night. Wasn't my birthday. Wasn't because Avery was coming. I think that's pretty special, but it was just because they wanted to do it. And I'm going to tell you, it's so humbling. And it makes me, it makes me want to give something away. It makes me want to do something for someone else because somebody did something for me. And I, I think that's the pattern. I really do. Would you accept the challenge this week to give something away? Donnie, I don't have enough. Find something. Find something, just give it away and watch what God does. If you can't find anything, just just remember that God gave you salvation. He, He didn't make you buy it. He didn't make you work for it. He didn't make you take a test to see if you deserved it. Truth is, none of us did. He just gave it to us. Hey, number three, and I'm through this morning. The third thing that I would say to you that we can do is that that I can bless others, not just with my words and not just my possessions, but I can bless others with my presence. Not presence, P-R-E-S-E-N-T-S's. Now, you can do that. But you can bless others with your presence. One of my best friends is sitting right up here. Jeremiah is sitting right up here. I'm going to sit down by Jeremiah for just a second. Is that cool? Jeremiah, is that okay, is that okay with you? I didn't ask Jeremiah if I could do this. I just assumed that he, he would let me. Because Jeremiah, boy, we have this in common. We really do. We do. We like to have a good time. You like to have a good time? I do too. And we like to do it together. You like to have a good time with me sometimes? Yeah, I do too. And we like to get in trouble together, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> we like to do things that make people go, what in the world are they doing? And and we just have fun doing it. Jeremiah, Jeremiah's been friends with me for a long time because Jeremiah, when I first got here, Jeremiah rolled up, not on, on this cart here. This is his new cart. But, but Jeremiah rolled up on my cart, rolled up on his cart beside me. We were out in Sullivan Hall, and he rolled up on his, car, his cart beside me. He looked up at me, and he said, who are you? <laughs> I said, I'm Donnie. He said, I'm Jeremiah. And I said, cool, dude. And we've been friends ever since. Uh, my life wouldn't be complete without Jeremiah. I look forward to seeing him. He'll wheel that cart all the way across, give me a high five. We'll, uh, we had the blessing together of, of getting up in that baptistry together. I had the blessing of being able to go under the water with, with Jeremiah as he was, as he was being baptized. And we did it all together. David and Jonathan, inseparable. And I think you've got some people in your life that would just love for you to be in their presence. Not bring them presents, but in their presence. Just be there. So let me give us some challenges. Can I do that? It's our application. Here's, here's, what, I'm, here's what I'm saying. When, if we really want to bless someone with our presence, we do these three things and we'll be all right. When we're with them, we will do this. We will listen very carefully. Notice I didn't say give advice. There may be a time for that. There may be. Sometimes you need some advice given to you. 
But most of the time when you're with someone else, you know what the best thing you can do for them? Just listen. Just listen to them. I love to read the Psalms. David was really big on this, reminding us that God hears us. And for God to hear us, that means he's listening. And one of the greatest things that we can do for each other is just listen. We can just, just be with them and hear what's going on. But answer this out loud. Is that easier, hard? There were four of us that were honest. Most of the time when you're with somebody, talking is easy. If you're with them and you enjoy being with them, that, that is. But sometimes it's good just to, just to listen carefully. Hey, would, would you accept the challenge this week to listen? You know, God does that for us. You ever go to God and just talk? Man, he's a great listener. Hey, be that listener in somebody's life. Be that listener. But Donnie, I have the gift of talking. Okay. <laughs> but you only have one mouth and two ears. Use those two ears. Listen. Hey, number two, this week let's love constantly. Listen carefully. Love constantly. Amen. Don't love conditionally. Don't give somebody your conditional love. Give somebody the type of love that God gives to you, unconditional. That he loves you knowing everything about you. When you mess up, he still loves you. Be that type of person to be a blessing to others. It is a blessing. Listen, it's a blessing when somebody knows you and knows really who you are and still loves you. Love constantly. I believe our children in our children's ministry need us to love them constantly. They need to know that there's, know that there's a love out there that's different than this world's love. And that's that type of love that God has for us. Listen carefully. Love constantly. And number three, let's look clearly. Look clearly. Look at that person not in a way that you would correct whatever it is in their life. Not as though you're in their situation. Not, not, not as though you have everything that it takes to get them to a better spot. Just look clearly at who that person is. Just, just love them for who they are. Don't love them for, for the type of person you want them to become. Just love them for who they are. I love that, that in our story of, of David and Jonathan, Jonathan didn't, oh my goodness, hear me guys. Jonathan didn't make it about him. Jonathan made it about David. We, hey, I'm, I'm telling you, I think we live in a society today where here's the trend. It's all about me. That's, that's, that's the trend. When really it's, it's all about the others. It's all about them. Is there any scripture that backs that up, Donnie? Yeah, let me give us three verses. Look at what the Bible says in Deuteronomy 31.6. Deuteronomy 31.6 reminds us of something that God does. Okay? Look at what it says. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Don't panic before them. For the Lord your God will personally, with his presence, go with you and ahead of you. He'll never leave you nor abandon you. Some of you memorized it. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. That's the principle. Go and be with someone. Look what the Bible says in, in 1 Peter 3 and 12. 1 Peter 3 and 12. It says, for the eyes of the Lord uh, are on the righteous and his ears are attentive to their prayers. Doesn't say anything about God's mouth right there, does it? No, no, God speaks. And when God speaks, we listen. But God shows us the pattern that, that we can we can just listen. We can be with somebody and listen. Look at what the Bible says in Jeremiah 31.3. Jeremiah 31.3. The Bible says, I have loved you, God is speaking, my people, with an everlasting love, with an unfailing love, I've drawn you to myself. So I, 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 I end today with this. No story. Nothing to give you chills, goosebumps. 
Nothing to tie everything together. It's out of the norm for me. I, I close with this. Who in your life needs you to be that type of person? Who in your life needs you to, to bless them with your words? Who in your life needs you to bless them with your possessions? Who in your life needs you to bless them with your presence? Who needs what you have? Would you stand, please? And just in the quietness and the stillness of this moment for a second, would you just bow your heads? And we just, just for a moment, just contemplate what this worship service has been. You might have connected with a song. You might have connected with a, with a part of the drama. You might have connected with something from God's word. Just, just for a second, contemplate why God would have you here. I prayed with all of my heart that only those that were supposed to be here would be here. And that if somebody was supposed to be here, I prayed against you missing this service with everything I had. So I'm just going to trust God that he answered my prayer. If you're here today and you've, you've never really understood that God loved you enough to send Jesus to die on you, I die for you, not, not because you deserved it, but because he loved you. If you're here today and you've never asked Jesus in your heart, hey, would you answer my prayer by doing that today? Because I prayed that you would. I prayed that you would today hear that you needed Jesus to be your Savior. Would you, answer, would you answer my prayer in that way? Would you today ask Jesus to be your Savior? If you don't know how to do that, you may want to step out and come down here to the front. Somebody wants to visit with you. Somebody wants to share with you how you can ask Jesus to be your Savior. You may be here today and and, and there is someone in your life that, that you need to bless. Would you answer that call? Would you just commit today to, to do that, just to bless someone? The way God has blessed you, just bless someone. You may be here today and uh, God is leading you to be a part of this family. We welcome you. You'd be an answered prayer. You would, and there's people praying that you would that you'd become a part of this church family. This church family loves and is quick to love. We'd welcome you, promise. I don't know what God might have said to you today. But if he said something, just respond to him. Patsy's gonna play, he's gonna stay quiet for just a second. And if God has placed upon your heart something to do, do it today. If it's private, do it right there where you are. If it's public, take care of it. Somebody wants to visit with you, I promise. Just for a few seconds. Amen. Let me have your attention for just a second. Would you look to the person beside you and would you just thank them for sitting by you? You'd have been all alone if they didn't sit there. Tell them real quick. And that was so much fun. Here's what I want you to do before you leave. Before you leave, I want you to find three more people. And I just want you to tell them, thank you for being here. Just just thank you. It'll, it'll blow them out of the water. They don't even know. They, they don't even think you know they're here. So just blow them right out of the water and just walk right up to them and say, thank you. Hey, let me read a prayer of blessing over you. Can I read that? 
If you're a guest with us today, thank you for being here. Right out back, we're going to have some guest gifts. I'd love for you to come by and get one. I'd love for you to come by and just let us know that you were with us today. Hey, today I want to read for you a blessing, and, and we're putting it on the board, and it's going to be different translations. Y'all know I don't preach out of the same translation usually more than once in a row, because I, because I want to, hear, and here's why, I, I just, I want to make sure that, that every now and then I'm reading from your translation, okay? Hey, look at what the Bible says in Numbers chapter 6. Uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you, may be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you, and may he give you peace. Hey, God bless you. We're dismissed this morning.